we've got one thing to focus on for this call, which is the facilities proposal. Um, we have been discussing this for quite a few months now. We've had a few iterations of how we were planning to add support for facilities to the um, modeling opportunity data spec. Um, we got to a point where I think um, we were reasonably happy with the model. Um, and then in the process of implementing the uh, adapter for fusion, a number of issues uh, came up. Um, so basically we started, we got, started to collect some implementation feedback, which raised some uh, valid questions about the approach that's currently in the editor's draft. So what I'd like to try and do today, unless anyone's got any other suggestions, is to just quickly recap what we've got in the editor's draft at the moment, then look at the, um, the approach that's been taken with Fusion, uh, and then work out on how we want to proceed moving forward. Okay. Um, so briefly, the, the 1.1 draft spec has a number of things in it. But by far the largest one is the facilities um, uh, concept because that's got uh, there's a whole new bit of the model. The other changes are just recognizing how to describe amenities at locations and some changes to the age range and gender restriction uh, properties. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen it already, there's a, uh, there's a board um, that I'm using to keep track of where things are in the specification process. So um, it's a big backlog of uh, other proposals that we need to try and get to, which is why I'm keen to move the facilities forward. Um, and you can see the stuff that is currently in the editor's draft. Um, so one of the, so just to kind of maybe frame the discussion, I think there's possibly there's three possible ways out of this call. We, are, <laughs> right? uh, we either uh, say, okay, it, what we have in the editor's draft is fine, uh, it might need to be revised in future releases, but let's just go ahead and publish because we know that there are other um, there are other publishers who are waiting on this and some of these other changes in order to uh, move forward and get more data available. Another option is we decide that we will uh, that we need a little bit more time to finesse the facilities model, um, but we will go ahead and publish 1.1 with just those other changes. So just the amenities, age range, gender restrictions, just to unblock that stuff. Because again, there are some publishers who uh, would like to use the, the kind of better model that we specified there. Um, if we do defer facilities, it will only be pushing it back a few weeks just so that we can get some refinements done. Um, or the, the final option is really we just, we don't bother pushing out 1.1 um, until we've done facilities. Um, which means holding back those other changes. So those are, those are the kind of broad options. Um, we can come back to, I'm not gonna suggest which, which way we should be going, we can come back to it towards the end of the call based on what we, what we um, feedback I get from you all uh, as we go through things. Um, so any, any questions or comments on that? No, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna briefly do then is just jump to the editor's draft and just have a quick recap of how we're planning to uh, provide support for facilities at the moment, um, and then uh, look at um, the fusion stuff. Um, so uh, let me jump over to the spec. So there's a new section in the spec, uh, which is 4.9 currently, which provides the kind of background uh, of conceptual model for, facil for facilities. Um, the way that we've ended up um, approaching it is to uh, describe facilities as a essentially as a, as a product. So it's um, it's an offer to use a of, um, uh, it's an offer to be able to, to take part in an activity using a particular location at a particular at some points in time. So. We can describe that facility use. You might be able to play table tennis or play football at a particular location. Um, we obviously describe what the activities are, so football, table tennis, where you'll be doing it, 
which might be, as we'll look at in a moment, might be quite high level of you can go to a leisure centre and play tennis, or it could be you could go to a specific tennis court or football pitch. Um, we described the offers to use that facility, so that's basically the price and the kind of, uh, some of the availability, and then the times at which that facility is available, so which we're calling informally at the moment slots. So uh, what, what time periods can you book uh, a facility for? So we've ended up, we've discussed different ways to do this. Um, that's what we ended up kind of uh, hitting on. It seemed to fit the models that some of the existing platforms are using, which tends to treat these things as products anyway. Um, we have, uh, without kind of getting into it on this call, there is, there has been uh, one concern about this approach uh, specifically for multi-use facilities where there might be different ways to configure a sports hall for different types of use. So you might have the whole sports hall, divide it into two or four or eight, depending on what is actually happening in, um, in the hall. Uh, there's a concern that that might end up with a churn in the updates for data consumers. Um, we hit, we uh, the, I think the last one, last call where we discussed facilities, we decided that um, uh, the, uh, an approach for dealing with that would be to kind of release the model and then see in practice how much of a churn there actually was and then make some decisions about um, how to address that. There's a separate issue in, in GitHub uh, which spells out some of the context for that discussion uh, and some of the remedies that, um, that might help deal with that churn. I don't think any of them really involved reworking the model. Um, it was about di choosing different ways to publish the data. Just kind of give that yeah, a context. Um, so if I jump through to the uh, section of the spec that talks about, actually got the list of properties. So we're defining, so in the 1.1 spec, it defines a new uh, type of facility use that will have the properties that are listed in this table. So there's some standard things in there that, that everything has, a URL, identifier, name, description, images, they're just kind of standard things. So the key thing is that um, facility use is uh, for use of a specific activity or activities, so football or tennis. Um, it's at a specific location. Um, and as I was alluding to earlier, that could be a leisure center or it could be an individual facility like a specific pitch or court. Um, it then has an array of events. So those are the individual slots. So, you know, the half hour or hour intervals at which that court or uh, pitch is available for. Uh, and then an array of offers. So, um, which is the, the pricing uh, for, for use of that facility. Um, so there are some examples in the spec. So there's a simple one here uh, that's for uh, table tennis. So this is describing, uh, so we have a facility use. Uh, the activities table tennis, the location in this case is just a leisure center. Um, there's a single offer for a 30 minute hire. Um, and just for the example, it's showing a single slot, uh, a 30 minute slot at 10 a.m. in the morning is currently available. Um, so that's kind of, this feels like the minimum thing that we need to be able to express in order to be able to say that a facility is available. There's a few uh, variants on that. Obviously, there could be additional offers, uh, and then a client can, um, uh, you know, different offers perhaps based on age ranges or member, non member pricing. Um, there could obviously be a lot more events. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that has come up is um, sometimes we might need to be able to do peak pricing. So, individual slots might have different prices. So in the second example, um, which is for football, it's uh, showing that uh, if you look at the events array, the individual events have offers, which is just the same as what we do with other events elsewhere in the model. So that indicates that, um, that there's a specific price for that uh, slot rather than a default price for using the facility. Um, there's a couple of things to highlight in this example. Um, here, uh, chosen to specify a specific pitch rather than a um, uh, leisure center as, as a whole. Um, 
And there's also uh, in the second slot here, there's this inventory level property, which allows us to say, actually there's two pitches available at this time. So we can do things like um, indicate that there's you know, multiple pitches available at slots and, and have a bit more fine grained availability and pricing associated with each of those slots. Um, so going back to my slides, that means that we can do things like publish availability to use uh, to do an activity using a facility at a leisure centre. So there's three tennis courts available at 10 a.m. We can specify uh, default. Um, anyway, but in this it, for, for the slot schedule, the idea here is that you can generate the empty slots. Um, so if you, let's say you're presenting a grid view a bit like my local pitch has, um, and you've got lots of, you know, um, lots of uh, squares that you can kind of say, I want to book that one, I want to book that one. You could construct that grid view based on the slot schedule and the slot duration, and then you could fill that view out using the slots themselves. Um, so I guess my question is, we can absolutely not include that information, but then how would we construct a grid view if we don't have that information? Um, do, you, do you kind of, infer that based on the slots and work backwards to construct the grid or how does that work? I, I think for us, um, we're fairly agnostic to uh, uh, the detail of the slot. Um, each uh, booking is represented in the same way on the page and uh, while you have the times aligned, there isn't a set um, uh, kind of X and Y axis. Or maybe Y axis, but not an X axis. But from what we've seen so far, I think that ideally it'd be great to have a grid view of the slots, but then in reality, then you have sometimes, uh, you have slots that are, even for the same time, you could book 30 minutes or you could book the whole hour in some venues, yeah. uh, which actually, so having this grid view makes no, no real sense. And on the other hand, you can have also a bank holiday, and if you have a bank holiday, but you are filling in this grid view uh, automatically just for the data, uh, you, be, you, will be, um, um, you will be doing misleading information because obviously you, that, that day won't have any slots in it. So right. that's why um, I think that all the information should be in the slot section or in the, on, in the event section and yeah. not make any assumptions. I think trying to generalize the whole thing. Assumptions are what? Assumptions are what? Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. no, I'm right. just going to say quickly on that, you guys. I agree with the um, the fact that it doesn't translate well to a grid because it's a problem that we face as well. Is how do you sort of map non-uniform slots on a grid? And I think the only way you could actually feasibly do it is to have sort of a minimum slot time, like a minimum slot unit that then gets sort of expanded on in specific slots so you could have if you wanted to do 45 minutes and 60 as an example you'd have like a minimum slot unit as 15 minutes and then you could you could work that into a grid if that's the way you wanted to go if if if, if having it on a grid was like an absolute requirement you could work around it that way so that could be a, potentially another property that could then feed in and help you build a grid off those sort of variable slot times so I suppose the question is, in this case, and it will vary, the booking system has a, a kind of a slot length and everything conforms. So I suppose the question is, you, do you guys want that information or should we just not include it? And I don't, I'm, I'm agnostic either way. It was just in there because we had it. Um, but if you're not going to use it anyway, because algorithms that you're using are just going to assume non-uniform slots, then actually it, it, it's kind of irrelevant, right? We might as well drop it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. What? From what I understand, we have dealt with uh, softwares that have presented it as a kind of uh, overall view, and we've done the work on our API to split it into different slots. But I think in our ideal situation, as per the kind of spec that I've uh, shared around this, um, uh, each slot has enough information to be kind of defined itself that's its its own product. Yep, great. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna. It sounds like we no separate slot property from the. Just gonna strike that through. Okay, right. So we touched on this as well, but let's, let's just gonna make it explicit. Um, in the current draft, 
um, the event, so you've got the array and event, so that's listing out all of the slots. So it would mean, um, it, you know, it's, it, I guess it's up to the publisher how, much, how many of those they include, whether you do it each day or whether you put out a whole week worth of slots. Um, so that array could get um, quite large. Um, one of the suggestions that Nick had within the fusion work was to um, break it out into two different uh, bits of data. That there would be, um, I think, what you call a slot schedule, which defines the basically the repeating calendar entries for the individual slots. So here, Sunday nine to five for sixty minutes. Um, um, sorry to interrupt you there, Lee. Just um, on this, they're separate. They're separate um, things. So the slot stuff is the same slot stuff. The slot schedule is again another bit of additional information that the booking system provides that we've included here. Um, and what that's used to power on the Everyone Active website is just opening times of the facility use. That's really all it's used for. And so if we don't have the duration, as we've said, we don't want to render a grid view, we're going to, so the only thing you'd use the slot schedule for there is, as Everyone Active has it, kind of opening and closing times of that particular space within the venue. Um, and I guess the question is, is that something that's useful? Or if not, then again, it can be dropped. Is that used on a on a kind of booking calendar, um, or is it just on a, on a list? Uh, no, in it, uh, uh, how can I do this? On the Everyone Active website, you can see that the, the, yeah. um, the, the any facility you pick out of their website, when you go into it, it opens up and has a description of that facility, yes. and then it has the opening times of that facility. That's yeah. so, so to, to give, give a specific example, so this bit of JSON I've got on the screen at the moment, uh, the location is Wells Leisure Centre, right? Mm -hmm. So where you've got the slot schedule, that's the opening times of the Leisure Centre? Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's the opening times of the facility within the Leisure Centre. Yeah. Okay. So, so is, that, is that then represented on the calendar? Um, so um, you, the, the calendar essentially uh, creates in, in our in our kind of uh, way of doing it a grid of, of those um, those slots, not those slots, but um, the, the opening times. I, I'm I'm struggling to see the point in it. Basically. Yeah. So um, it, it basically, if you uh, let me just let me just find you everyone actives uh, website and in, in yeah, so I'll, I'll show you what that use case is. But sorry, I, sorry. I, I, yeah. So as I understand it then, so at the moment within the spec and using stuff that's in schema.org, we can already describe the opening hours for the leisure centre because there's some properties for that. We can specify opening hours each day. What this is doing is specifying the opening hours of the tennis courts at the leisure centre, mm. which is yeah. a refinement. So it's kind of, do we have that as a general requirement to be able to specify opening hours of individual facilities separate? from the list of slots. But I guess what we would do, if I, unless I'm missing something, is that um, we would just get all the slot information which has start and end time uh, and price uh, as discussed, uh, and just display that data. Um, there isn't anywhere we would use um, a general opening hours, unless we want to con contradict the slot information that we're getting through anyway. Well, maybe the, the fact that the, the facility is open doesn't mean that you can play. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I can see the benefit of adding the opening hours. Um, it's just a matter of rephrasing that instead of beta slot schedule to beta opening hours. But I, I can see some benefit of that. Anybody else got any comments? Would, it, would anybody else use that data? Good. Yeah, I, I think maybe opening hours in our for the use of opening yeah. hours would be useful data for sure. But, but I could, um, just to be clear, the opening hours for the sorry, for the, yeah, for, for within the leisure center, yeah, 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 okay, okay. So if this was expressed as opening hours, then um, because I'm also thinking about consistency with how opening hours are specified in the other bits of the model, which is slightly different. So, so I think um, if it's being displayed as general information um, on the website, then definitely we would do that, uh, and we do display that ourselves already. 
Uh, so it would be useful in that context. Okay. Right, just make some notes there. Um, Nick, were you, did you want to show something, or, or can I? Uh, I think I think we've probably got the same conclusion. I was I will um, uh, uh, I'll ping you the the link of the um, of the actual uh, what everyone actives uh, own website shows for this information. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's at this stage. I think we've probably got the conclusion that it is useful to have it. So uh, don't need to labor labor the point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah. So one thing I will, a question I will ask is: it's useful to have it. Is it? Um, do we need to have? Do we need to have made sure that we've agreed the modeling for that before um, proceeding with the spec or? Is this something that we could just add in as a, as a later improvement? Well, can I ask, are we just using the opening hours specification as is? Because that was, I think that's how it's currently modeled, just using the scheme.org out of the box. So I don't know if the I think needs the example to be here was the schedule, which is different to the opening hours. Uh, a schedule here, whereas opening hours is uses slightly different construction. Oh, so you're, you're totally right. So what this has got is a repeat frequency inside each one to allow you to construct the slots. What I'm hearing from everyone at the moment is we don't need that. So we could make this a opening hours, just a raw opening hour spec with no additional yeah. slot info. Okay, fine. Yeah, that, okay. I think we're on the same page. Right. All right. Um, the, right, I'm going to move this forward because we're halfway through. So the, the other change um, was, a, there was, there's actually a few related things about how much granularity we provide about the individual uh, courts or pitches. So if you remember when I was, at the moment in the spec, we either just kind of say, you can play tennis uh, at a certain location, or we can specify, you know, there are these slots for these individual courts. So if you want to provide information about every single court, about every single pitch, they would have to be separate facilities in the, in the feed. Um, what Nick was suggesting with the fusion stuff is that we, spec we separately specify location, in which case the, kind of the leisure center where you're turning up, and then have a separate array of facilities, which would be the individual uh, courts. Um, has anybody got any feedback on that as a variation? I think it would still mean that if you wanted to specify a separate set of slots for court one and court two, you would have to break them out into separate uh, facilities. Yeah, the, the, this is again because the booking system represents that that, that slot is a court um, is available um, because it's facility use. It's a grouping that you can book that across court one and court two, or pitch one and pitch two, or whatever they're called. When you say across, you um, so sometimes your courts are split into multiple um, in a multi-use facility. You might have a um, it's five aside court that's also four badminton courts, and they'd be called court one, court two, court three, court four, and then so you would book five aside as court one to four, and then court five to eight or something. Um, yeah. So, uh, how do, what do people think about that then? Yeah, that seems to make sense. Um, that latest, <laughs> latest version. But yeah, no, that's it. That seems to make sense from our perspective. I think it'd be good to have a chat with one of the operators on that because it's the kind of you want to be using whatever terminology they use rather than us kind of inventing it. <laughs> so whether that is another have a chat with GLL or everyone active. Um, because it is confusing because as soon as you go into multi-use multi sites, you are talking about that is a sports hall, which has, depending on how they will, they will divide it into four badminton courts, which will be equivalent of one five-side pitch, one full-size basketball pitch or, or basketball court or whatever. So, uh, I don't think what Nick's saying is wrong. I think we just need to be clear on the terminology because you will confuse people. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, because I, I thought we were trying to avoid exposing some of that complexity. So I, I'm I'm unclear about what what this what this does what, from a client point of view. What, what would I do? What would I display to the user? What choices would they make of this? Yeah, I think, I, I think from a user perspective, I don't think they'd be bothered about that. They just want to know that they can book a a you know a five a side pitch or a court. I mean, you do get people have you know individual preferences over a badminton courts, depending on how things are. But um, that all depends on how the system is. The only other thing that you know a user is going to want is to know whether they are their attributes around that individual court, i.e. is it for or something like that, where that's, that might be important, but I don't think they need to, if exposing that complexity or this is, we could, this means showing that to them, this is booked across, it's one pitch booked across courts one to four, I think that just confuses things. Hmm. See, I think those requirements are already covered by the current draft, because you can either just say, you know, you can play table tennis or you can play tennis at the leisure centre, and you just provide the slots and the invention level. Or if you need to provide more granularity, say for pitches, you wanted to describe that you can play on AstroTurf versus you know, other surface, you can provide a facilities around that. You still don't have to list every individual pitch, but if you wanted to, you could also include that, that level as well. Um, I, I'm just unclear about the, this bit, Nick, about what... Yeah, so... I, um... So I, I, th I think this is because the, um, it, because of the way Gladstone's set up, that might not always, so this is probably a bad example here. I'm just wondering if we can get some sample data that might be more obvious that if you've got a, if you've got three pitches, let's say, um, on the MLP site, sorry to keep referencing that one, I've been, that's my kind of go-to is, is looking at what, how, how to lay information out. On the MLP site, there's a different photo associated with each pitch, and so you you book the five aside court, or you'll book the whatever you know the three G, and our facility use in inverted commas is a different. So a facility use, <clears throat> a facility use is a five G pitch. Sorry, is that specific five G pitch, or it's that specific, um, or that specific something else, and the facility is what that is. That makes sense. So, the, so if there's a let's say that there's a 5G pitch with two half pitches, then this facility will be those. But if you don't have this facility kind of data, then you wouldn't. All you have is the location of the leisure centre and badminton or football. So you wouldn't be able to identify which photo to associate it with this particular slot. If that makes sense, like what what am I actually booking? Am I booking the 3G pitch up up in the top left of the centre or the you know the indoor football pitch which so if yeah you... sorry go ahead sorry i was just going to say i agree with nick there what we see in reality is something very similar to that in that um users would <laughs> uh, so for example if they're in oxford you could be booking a facility and um, one of the football pitches and you could be walking half a mile you know across the whole length of facility to be started for a football match two o'clock um, basically, if there's no way of defining which facility they've individually booked, I can see in practical terms that causes a lot of complications. Yeah. Well, Jamie, Jamie probably th think, I think you're right in terms of what a facility, a facility, I mean, how we have an active places. So for each 3G pitch, for example, is an individual facility ID. And that will be associated, as Nick says, with a photo. But when you talk about, see, I think that's important for the consumer to know which pitch when you're, it's the full size pitch, but then and how they cut that up, they don't need to know about when they've cut that into, you know, they've taken a full size 3G and during the week it is, it is available for three seven asides. They don't need to know the complexities about that seven aside is in this part of that pitch. They just need to know it's associated with that, that individual facility. So probably how MLP have cut it up is, is correct. It's just, it's just how you explain that back to the consumer. They don't need to know. They just need to know you're playing on this pitch, and that's where your fire side is. So they don't need to know your pitch's number, how they've cut it up in their back end system that that's, you know, that seven aside is number one or number two or whatever it is of that particular facility. Yeah. So, so, so again, I think, um, I mean, that, that, I can understand the requirement there. 
and I think, but I think we 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 accommodate that in the current draft in that you can you could you could provide in you could make every single pitch a separate facility use. You in the location it would be a description of the individual pitch with name, photo, description, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, right. So so ah, I see I see the difference. Right? So and then, and then okay. but, but the consequence is that everyone would have its own set of slots, which might be a positive or negative. I think all we're really saying here is that location, which you're pointing out there, at where it's got type is sports activity location. I think we're just basically splitting that because I think we're probably, if that said AstroTurf pitch um, with, with, with an associated photo, right? Mm -hmm. Then we would probably be on kind of the same page. Um, I think the subtle difference here is that location in the way that we've done it with Fusion is consistent with the way that session locations work. And so the location is a place. The place includes, well, exactly that snippet you just had there, actually, um, on the previous thing. Yeah, that's, that's the snippet of the location, the place, the URL, name and address. That stuff is, is the same because it's still, it's still a leisure center. It doesn't matter that we're talking about facilities now. And all the suggestion for Fusion here is that we split the facility information, which is there's an AstroTurf pitch, into a specific facility thing um, that's different because that way we can basically we if we're plotting pins on a map we can group by location and the location field and say that's where that's the leisure center this is in and if we want the extra level of granularity for the facility we can look at the facility property and say and that's the, the astroturf pitch um because yeah. again there's slightly different levels of granularity okay so i think we're mostly on the same page here i think the only bit that i'm maybe pushing back on a little bit is that there's a way to accommodate that already um, this example doesn't show it because it's this is showing that uh, Bath Sports and Leisure Centre has a gym inside it. But you can specify it either way around. You can say this pitch is within this leisure centre um, and can and do put all of that description within the location model rather than specifying uh, than creating some extra properties for it. Yeah, I mean we could split this out as a separate proposal. I guess the the thing with that is that there. Um, we're talking about nested locations, effectively, where the highest level location is the um, the top. The top level is the astroturf pitch, and the second level down is the leisure centre. Um, and I guess that the benefit of having facilities separate to location is that you don't have to worry about traversing that tree and finding your leisure centre in some depth of that location. If you see what I mean? Because you because the actual because if you're plotting this on a map, you just want to know the postcode. And if the postcode is always at location.address.postcode, that's really easy. But if the, lo if the postcode is sometimes at location.address.postcode and sometimes at location.location.address.postcode because it's inside a, because we've, 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 because we've embedded a um, location inside an AstroTurf pitch, then it, it, it creates this kind of additional work which some in some use cases you don't actually care what pitch it is you just want to say there's an available slot and it's at this postcode because you're at that level of abstraction right. yeah i yeah I, I understand that and, and i think if we would if we document this we would we would specify it. it'd be like one level or, or we'd you know we'd flatten stuff as much as possible to avoid that um, yeah i mean just building on the nested locations that you're talking about there nick um if they were nested um I don't know if I'm understanding this correctly or not, but if you take the badminton court split idea as, as an example, how do you propose like consolidating the offers within that model? Because would, would they change as well? Or are we talking about two different facility uses here? Because I'm not still fully so, yeah. down, with the, down with the spec, but it seems to me like if you end up with nested facilities with different configurations, especially if it's multi-use, then the offers would be dependent on what the user chose as well. So the, I, um, I'm probably not understanding it. Probably, yeah. the, 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 I think what really we're discussing the variation is: do we have um, the like the court as a within a separate um, separate property here, or is it um, or is it within? Do we say that the court is within this separate place, right? So you can imagine maybe this location, if this location thing was inside the facility, the offers would still be specified at the same level. It would be about the facility use or for the individual slot. 
but, okay. but, but Rory's right, actually, that the, the challenge here is that if there are two facilities specified, as sometimes there are, then we can't, where do you put location? Do you put it inside court one or inside court two? Um, you would put it, well, you put it in both. So you duplicate the postcode into both of those. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, I think there's the, the other thing that I find confusing about this is are these where you've got the list of slots and availability, are both court one and court two available at all of those times? Yeah, that, that was also mainly my point as well about um, how the offers consolidate. Because yeah, so, so I suppose you're right. The reason this isn't a very clear example at all. If we looked at the data coming out of Fusion, what you'll see is that court one and court two here is actually booking both courts because this, this facility use includes both courts. Right, because it's a separate facility use then. Can we assume that? Right. Yeah. Okay. So there'll be a facility use for just court one, a facility use for just court two, and a facility use that covers both court one and court two. Okay. okay. That makes but, sense. And I suppose that this is the thing. If, if you have two, then embedding the location in both will then mean you duplicate the postcode in both, and then you have to then traverse an array as well. So we'd be traversing. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, though, it still feels weird to be specifying an array of things because I, I would consider the combination of court one and court two as a different thing that I'm booking than just a list of things that I've booked. The only reason this gets this, this the reason we might want to consider exposing that array and not trying to you know shove it all into one string, which we could do, is that the booking system actually uses that for other things. So if you were going to try and build a booking integration off the back of this, those IDs, those identifiers there are actually really useful because you, you would use those when you make the booking um, and doing other things in the system. So I guess there's a, there's just a kind of, I suppose there's, there's a like allowing, allowing for people to expose what's in their system without, um, yeah. Okay, we've only we've got a few minutes, so I'm going to move us on. I'm just, it feels like we're, we're, we've, we understand what the requirements are. There's just some discussion around how that's expressed, and maybe we can follow up on the in, in GitHub to just to just to show some different snippets to yep. see if it works. Yeah, yeah. So, um, other things that you I think had highlighted was um, adjacent courts. Whether there were offers to have other courts. Uh, if you've got an example in here. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So sort of. in here, there's got a slot where you can say that there's one court available, but there's a adjacent inventory level. There's a court next to this one, which is also available. So just a, a bit of detail on this. The, 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 one of the challenges we had here is because facility use is bundling slots together that are in the set. So if you've got eight badminton courts in a sports hall, you're only going to have one facility use, which is badminton court and the inventory level will be eight. Does that make sense? If you choose to publish it that way, yeah. Or you could do each individual court. Or you could do each individual court. But if we're using facility use in the kind of the, that sense, then then this is this is eight. Um, and there's two issues with that. I mean, it, it's great because it does remove the complexity of the sports hall to Nick's earlier point. And I think we, we kind of spoke about this at length last time and why that was useful to not worry about, you know, people just want to book a family court, they don't care which one. Um, so that's that's quite good. The challenge that creates is when you book a thing, you actually do want to book one of them um, because that and that's how the booking system kind of works. So there's a there's a, a part point in this process where you want to actually expose that there are eight. Um, and so maybe if you just scroll down a little bit there, where it says feed slots um, to the very bottom, uh, one below that, sorry, there, yeah. So this is what you end up with. Um, so this is side side. This is just jumping over the uh, uh, adjacent inventory for a second. Um, the inventory there you can see breaks out into two. So you can see that this is actually the way it's it's done here. Look, so court sports sports hall seven court seven and eight is one booking, and court five and six is another. And you can book either of those um, as a separate things. There's prices for both. Um, now, obviously, we've rolled it up so that you don't expose this detail and it just you're just booking a couple of courts at the high level. 
Um, but when you get into actually making the booking, you've got to pick which one of these you book. And so we need to therefore expose these two different IDs effectively, these two different IDs that are coming through that offers are the two IDs you literally give the booking system to transact on. So you need to pick one of these to book. Um, okay. And it, but just can't you just be told which one you have booked when you do booking? Uh, you mean just randomly assign it or? So, yeah, well, yeah, so is, is there a strong user need to be able to say, I want to book two adjacent things? Because if we don't, we don't have that strong need, then we don't need to put some of this more complexity around adjacency um, in, in the spec at this point. Um, I, I think um, it does happen a lot with users that uh, it's a group of people and they want to play in next sort of facilities. Um, so it would be quite an extreme level of simplification. Um, if we can bring it in, um, then it would be useful. Um, but if it's a huge complexity, then I don't know. I know for, for what we've done so far, I think that the, it'd be great if the API, the Open Active API should to display as much information as possible so you know exactly that page is booked or not. And then uh, when you are consuming that data, which is what we are doing, we, we aggregate that, we decide to say, okay, so we have four tennis courts available and then we are going to aggregate that and display that as only one slot that has four availabilities or four, um, I think it's called inventory level in here. But that's something that you might decide to want as an API consumer rather than uh, when you are displaying the API from the, from the source. Because uh, yeah, you might want to book one pitch or one tennis court, or you want, might want to, to know whether tennis court A is actually available or not. But anyway, th this is what we've seen so far from doing some several integration with several providers. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody else got any thoughts? I think, sorry, um, I, what, what I'm trying to find a way forward is, um, it sounds like there, there, there is a requirement, but do we need to, is it going to block us from moving forward? Is this something that we can add as a revision? Or do we need to have all, is just this kind of adjacency, more complex inventory need to be in straight away? I guess the, the, I guess it's actually a problem to do the opposite. So it's it's more complicated with Fusion to roll it up and summarize it, and then figure out how the booking works when you can't specify a particular court to book. That's actually more complicated than exposing the detail um, as an implementation. So if we wanted to publish the spec that rolled this up, uh, I, to make this conform to the spec we would then publish would take more effort than if you see what I mean. Than making the spec allow allowing the than the spec allowing us to have this detail in it. Yeah, I, I guess my concern here is that this bit, particularly where we're adding an array of inventory, is, is actually kind of turning the model completely on its head. Um, because we already, we already do have a way to specify kind of availability at, in these individual locations, is by having each one be a separate facility use. Um, this seems to be trying to use it in. Um, trying to specify places in two locations within the model. We've got the, we've got the location specified, the location and facility specified at the facility use object, and then we're doing it again within the inventory, and that just feels very complicated. So here's my challenge. I, I totally agree with you, and this is one of the things that we're struggling with with this. Um, it's complicated. The challenge is, um, if you don't group the eight squash courts in the model when you expose them, then it's quite difficult to then group them after because the grouping is around the properties that we're not actually necessarily exposing. We don't expose any common IDs that you could use to group. So you wouldn't have any idea that those eight squash courts were actually one exactly the same thing and eight instances of the same. So if we don't group them, then there's a problem for the data consumer in then having to try and figure out how to group them based on names and fuzzy matching and that kind of rubbish. Um, so, maybe we want to group them if we want to simplify the experience for the user to let them just book one of eight squash courts, they don't care which one. But then the next challenge is when you actually come to book one, um, as um, 
as the um, MLP guys were just describing, you want to then pick which one you're booking and expose that information. So we go from a place of, I don't care which one, just show me the aggregate view because I've got thousands of courts across, you know, tens of thousands of centers to choose from. When I've figured out, you know, where my spare squash court is across the whole of London and I've zoomed into that center, I actually want to book two next to each other for me and my mate. And then at that point you need detail um, or, or, you know, football or whatever it is. Um, so I guess that's, that's why there's two levels here. There's like the London view where I just want two football, football pitches next to each other or whatever they are. Um, and then there's the, I want to get into the detail and I want to book them view. Um, so just a quick note on that. So we are grouping aggregating data on the website for certain, uh, and we we are we are not giving any group ID, and it's basically everything done manually. And it's I don't think it's a big deal, to be honest. Not having this uh, group ID to know that two um, two different facilities are some, some, somehow related. It requires some effort on the developer side, but I. I, I, I'm, I'm not finding that especially hard. Okay. Any and other any other comments? Back to this, um, you were showing the slots data, and mm -hmm. I'm out of curiosity. If you are for the same slot, you have two offers. Is that right? Yeah. In, yeah. How would you know what price you display for that slot in the let's say a calendar? Well, that's the other, the other advantage of this um, kind of rolling up approach is that if the price is uniformly specified, so in the Gladstone booking system, you can guarantee those two prices are the same because they actually set the same, they're the same number in the database, like the exact same, you know, variable. So it will, they're guaranteed to be the same, which means that you can reliably summarize them as being the same in the previous kind of rolled up view without having to make the guess of, of that they are. Um, but I can tell. What I guess I'm wondering is either we care about this rolling up, which is where the last proposal came from, and facility use is kind of our focus, or we don't. In which case, may, maybe this concept of facility use is is not quite. It, we maybe need to take a step back again and say actually we don't need to roll things up. So let's actually have all the granular data in you know sports halls where you've got different ways of cutting them. Put all six squash courts or all eight badminton courts out there don't roll them up, have more data presented, and then let data users kind of do that rolling up after. Um, and I guess there seems like we've got a bit of a fork in the road here. We just need to figure out which of those, and then that would potentially influence the revision. As an API consumer, <laughs> and, and I am, uh, I think that um, getting more detail it's better for us and then it's up to you to decide how you want to use that information so, but so just so that i'm clear when we're talking about the more detail publishing every location as a separate facility use with its own individual offers and slots in the way that is currently drafted in the spec no the infantry level there is the issue we don't have a concept of inventory level in that other view. We just have available or unavailable um, because they're all individual um, slots. They, you you know it's court eight. You don't you don't um, aggregate it up to be just one of the many courts. So, so I'm unclear what we're voting for then. That that to, for this alternative. No, it's a question of whether the. Um, so it sounds like this 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 level of detail, however we present it, needs to be in there because we need the detail. The question is at the level above this. So when you've got your slot feed, I don't know if you've seen it. There's a. Um, you got it open there, Lee. The second tab. Is that what the fusion lifestyle slots are? Um. The, the sixth tab, sorry, or fifth tab across. Is that slots? Yes. So, so this slots feed here, the question is, um, contrast on the screen is, uh, uh, so, the, the, so the, um, the question is, that at the moment has inventory level one. It could be inventory level eight for that option. Um, the question is, is do we want that inventory level there to be 
you know, eight and then have the, you know, and then not, not care about the detail about the rest of it. So we, we, that is like, there'll, there'll be thousands of slots in there changing really frequently um, as things get booked. So we're synchronizing at the moment at a kind of facility use level, not on a court by court basis. So the question is, do we want to continue synchronizing on a facility use level? And then when we get to booking, drill into the courts and themselves uh, later, or do we want to synchronize on a court level and lose this kind of rolling up thing that's going on where we kind of aggregate the court one to eight as one thing and synchronize on that. So um, another quick note on aggregating data. The, the reason why I think that we should display the details and then leave it to the API consumer is because there is a really um, interesting use case. Let's say that you have two 11 aside football pitches and you want to split each one in two five aside football pitches. So maybe you, you want to have two facility use, one per each football pitch uh, sorry, 11 aside football pitch, but when you aggregate the data, you want to aggregate all the football pitches, so you would have four availabilities, or the five aside and two for 11 aside. And even though they are two different different facility uses, so that's why I think that on as an API provider, you should be you should uh, detail the information as much as possible and then leave it up to the consumer to decide how he wants to aggregate it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm conscious of the time that we're nearly out of time. Um, <laughs> we kind of work a, a way forward here. We weren't allowed to leave the room, were we? <laughs> we, we were. There, there were. I'm trying to look. The, the other things I think are less. I think we've touched on, but we can. Um, it's more about APIs actually than the model. So they're separating out feeds for facility use and slots. Um, Adding a subtype, adding a specific type of event for slots um, and variable slot length, and there was a, a Nick and I have had a discussion about how to, how to deal with that. Like, if you want to buy thirty minutes plus an extra thirty minutes, it could be expressed in a in an offer. But I, it the the thing that we seem to be keep spiraling around and not really kind of getting everyone on board with is the level of detail that we're including in feeds in the model. Um, so I. Um, I think we need to be talking, we need to be having some actual concrete examples, like JSON documents that we can look at, comment on, um, and decide which is the right level of granularity. Because I, I feel like in these discussions, we're having quite a high level back and forth, but in practice, until you actually see the data, we're not really going to um, decide what, what works for people. Does that, does that sound reasonable to everyone else? Yeah, I mean, we have our API document that um, we can look at again and uh, share with the group. Um, I, and what, what, what I'd like to get, I get, I suppose I'd like to see um, is perhaps uh, uh, Nick and uh, well, anyone actually that has some comments on the level of granularity actually update the GitHub issue with a kind of this is how I think it should work. Um, being very clear about um, the, the the changes that are required in order to get us there, because it sounds like I may be misinterpreting, but it sounded like some of the inventory level stuff could just be dealt with by moving the inventory level out of the offer and putting it onto the slot, um, which would be a fairly minor change. But then constructions like having a detailed array of inventory for separate uh, separate locations feels like a much bigger rework of the model. Um, do you see what I mean? That this uh, kind of feel like we're not quite all connecting on the the detail. Yeah, no, I I think that's that thing that's 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 really good. Um, and maybe we, I I think that the thing is, if we're all implementing against this or thinking about it like we'd implement against it, that's probably where we'll find the most kind of um, sure opinions, I suppose, on this. Because I guess where 
Um, some of this has come out obviously from an implementation. Uh, I wonder if, you know, on the other side, if data consumers, you guys are kind of thinking about using this. Um, it, that might be a way of, um, I don't know if we have like two, two alternative JSON documents. One's got, one's got the kind of granular feed and one's got the uh, grouped feed. And then we um, can kind of uh, vote or um, whatever people think is, is more useful for them. Um, because I, I think this is one of those things that, especially if we do this and roll it out to all the different endpoints, we're probably going to have to deal with the problems that if we haven't thought it through now across all of those. Uh, so it would be good to make sure that we have uh, all had a chance to think about, you know, when we use it, what the implications are and all the rest of it. I, I, I can't, I can't see a clear uh, advantage of either, to be honest. I can see the benefits of both. Um, it looks like on the one hand, we've got a lot of data being shifted because increasing granularity at the sync level means we're going from what's already potentially a lot of data to even more data because the slots get times by 10. But the other side of it is that then we are prescribing a roll up, which absolutely to, to you guys' point, um, is maybe the wrong roll up. Maybe people want to group things in different ways. So actually maybe there's no way of avoiding it and, and actually granular is the way forward. So I can kind of see, I suppose it depends really on, on what that roll up is. Um, and it's probably simpler for data providers to just publish the granular stuff and not do a group by, to be honest. Um, so it's cheaper that way. So I, yeah, I, I can't see the, yeah. So maybe if we, if we create two JSON documents and then think about, Consuming them. Well, we yeah, can have yeah. to avoid the, the increasing number of slots. But we have our filters in the URL, so we don't display all the slots for everything, but just for a time range. Yeah, but I mean, we're we're not talking about the URL, the API design here, though. I mean, the, the obviously, there's there's ways to kind of filter and query over the data, but here we're just trying to capture how we're organizing the data. Um, so uh, can I suggest that, that um, everyone goes, uh, like after the call, goes away and looks at the um, facilities proposal um, and, and the drafts that, uh, that are in the spec and that I've been showing that Nick had circulated for Fusion um, and just maybe just jot down a few things on what you think works or doesn't work about each of them so that we can start to put together some concrete examples. Um, I think in terms of moving forward, uh, we're clearly not quite ready to publish facilities still. Um, my suggestion would be that we do option two, that we push out 1.1 with the minor changes that we have agreed on, the age, gender, etc. Uh, and then try and get uh, facilities done uh, at the door end of June. What do people think about that? Sounds reasonable to me, considering all the discussions yeah. we have still. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yep, sounds reasonable. Yeah, I, I think to get you know to to get this over the line because we've had quite a few discussions out. We, we are again, we all do need to kind of like actually get into the the details. So sharing some examples that that would work for everybody, I think, is the best way forward, isn't it? Uh, so I, I think I'm going uh, to wind this up because we are over time. Um, I appreciate all of appreciate you all uh, giving up uh, over an hour and out to kind of discuss and debate this. It is very useful in order to get this designed in the right way. Um, and if you're able to kind of provide a bit more input, then it would be great for us to get this over the line. Uh, so yeah, so thanks for all of your time, and um, we'll pick this up again in a couple of weeks to make sure that we keep the momentum going. Thanks, guys. Super. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, guys. Great. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Progress. Right.